I have worked in the tourism industry most of my life as a former hotel manager. Even back when I was 15, 16 years old, I was working in hotels. I love to travel. I travel often. I am personally devastated by what has happened to the tourism industry in the last year. It's given so many friends of mine have devoted their lives to this industry and are crushed. I'm very interested in this topic about how we're going to get this industry back on its feet, not just for my own personal travels and having fun, but also for people's livelihoods and how large of a and how large of an industry this really is and it permeates so many parts of society. How are we going to do this? There are many programs out there. We've talked about travel bubbles in the past, but here's something else that is going on. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rojo Reads the News. I'm your host, Paul. Today, I have an article that's from China Daily, and it's aggregated by my friends at OneTube Daily. It says, Trip.com pours $500 million into Tourism Recovery Fund. If you don't know what Trip.com is, it started in China as C-Trip, basically China Trip, right? Not common, and it expanded to Trip.com when it went international. And it's giant. It's one of the largest uh, travel aggregators uh, in the world. And I've used the other ones. I've used Expedia, Hotels.com, Booking.com, which actually never worked for me. You know, Orbitz and all of these other aggregators out there. But now I exclusively use Trip.com. Now, they're not a sponsor of mine. I, they don't pay me for saying that. I use it because they are so convenient in traveling throughout China. can be difficult if you use these outside um these outside aggregators don't necessarily have people on the ground here in China. Travelocity is really not a thing in China. So having trip.com to travel within China, whether it be for flights, train tickets, uh, hotels, you know, not every hotel can accept a foreigner, but I've never, not once been turned away from a hotel, expensive or cheap, if I booked on trip.com. Plus their customer service is fantastic. Anytime I've ever had an issue, they call me before I even tell them of my issue, and they solve it right away. They're really great. I hope I can work with them. I've tried to reach out to them and say, hey, for my vlog channel, my travel channel, let's work together. Let's get some things going. Um, but uh, we haven't been able to work out any kind of deal. If you're a fan of my vlog channel and my travels, trip.com is my go-to. China's Trip.com group has created a $500 million fund to help airlines, hotels, and other partners rebound from the coronavirus pandemic as the online travel group aims to spur an international tourism revival to echo signs of recovery in its home market. Yes, the Chinese travel market is on a very steep incline. They are recovering very quickly. It's evident in the hotel rates and in the frequency of the flights and the flight capacity. It's starting to happen. Jane Soon, CEO of the group, told the Nikkei Asian Review in a recent interview that new ways of engaging with customers and promoting products could help restore confidence. Though some industry experts expect that travel demand will remain low even after the virus subsides and that recovery in the sector will be slow. As the industry leader, we always need to focus the industry in a way that gives confidence to our partners as well as our consumers, Sun said. So we are very innovative in terms of new methods to reach out to consumers and new products. These have been very positive. Trip.com said the massive fund is part of the Travel On initiative, which launched on Monday. The money will be used to bolster the cash flow of global partners by reducing and waiving some commissions as well as providing loans and advertising. I'm the highest tier customer at trip.com, which gives you, you know, more points that you can use for discounts and upgrades at hotels. It also gives you some exclusive deals. You know, I get massive discounts often in the hotels I stay at. But in addition, it shows up on my reservation that I'm a diamond tier. And when people see that, when the front office of a hotel sees that, then they also give me additional perks. You've seen this in my vlog and people often wonder, how do I do that? And there's many different ways. I actually talk to the hotels before I arrive. I speak their language when I get there, but also through my booking, you can see the type of traveler that I am. The fund initially launched in March with 140 million, but has increased to half a billion dollars. That's a lot. The company is also offering discounts of up to 60% for travel products, including deals where viewers can buy package tours to destinations featured in promotional events live streamed via social media. Travelers will have more flexibility in canceling for free and changing itineraries. 
Helping suppliers around the world is indispensable to Trip.com, which gains commissions from selling travel and tour packages comprised of transportation, accommodations, and local tours. It has more than 400 million users. Yes, I, I have used that component. It's actually changed in the last few years, but when I first came to China and started traveling throughout Asia, I've used those packages when I went to uh, Malaysia, Singapore, and uh, I was very, very happy with those packages, including airfare, accommodation, tours. It was wonderful. A similar revival plan was launched in March, targeting travelers in China, where the company operates under the Sea Trip brand. We saw in our customers that demand was very strong because people have been locked down for a long, long time since then. The company saw an 80% recovery in the number of bookings for Chinese domestic travel. When talking with hotel owners worldwide, I found occupancy rates were even much lower than in China. So whatever works in China, in theory, should work worldwide, she added. Sun said travel demand was also picking up in some Asian countries that, dem that demonstrated their ability to contain the virus, such as South Korea, Japan, and Thailand. However, big questions hang over wider air travel. Some Asian countries have opened borders to one another through travel bubbles, agreements between nations that have contained the virus but have prioritized business travelers over tourists. Yes, we are all still waiting for tourist travel bubbles to open. I know I am. Looking at air in particular, the future that shapes the recovery is still not clear, Steve Saxon, partner at McKinsey, told a conference held by the Hong Kong Tourism Board on Wednesday. He estimates that international travel will return to 2019 levels only in 2022. Every country we survey shows the majority of people are expecting to be traveling less after the COVID-19, Saxon said, citing fear of infection and the bleak economy. Hmm, consumer confidence is still rather low. Roughly 90% of China's domestic flights are operating normally again, and the country's domestic market is considered to be a big beneficiary of spending redirected from international travel. Saxon estimates that an additional $238 billion will be poured into the market, but based on surveys in April and May, many Chinese are still wary of even short-haul domestic trips. The recovery is slower than people were expecting, he said. I've been saying it the whole time. Recovery is going to be very, very slow. In fact, I think it's been moving faster than I expected. The International Air Transport Association estimated in May that it would take until 2022 for domestic flight worldwide to return to 2019 levels in terms of distance flown by passengers and until 2024 for international flight to reach the same point. Wow. Wow, we got to wait three more years. Asked about IATA's forecast, Sun told Nikkei that she is more optimistic. According to the company's joint survey with Google, about half of respondents said they would consider taking their next trip before year end. Sun said she hoped scientists would find a vaccine and cure for the virus. Once people feel they're immune from the disease, I don't think they'll be too concerned, she said. And now it's the best time. Everything is so cheap and there are few tourists. Yes, now is the best time. If you can get there, go. I'm lacking a little bit of money right now, but prices are still very low. I can go to Sanya, very, very cheap. Hotels are half price on the beach, five-star resorts. Uh, flying domestically is extremely affordable in China. Um, the train systems here are fantastic. So if you can't find a flight, you can always find a train. My personal feeling is after a vaccine is introduced and distributed worldwide, in order to travel internationally, you're going to have to have that little yellow vaccination card that you need to go to certain places in Africa and South America, right? It's basically it's like the same size of as a passport. And you're going to have to have the COVID-19 vaccination in that little yellow card. And they're going to start requiring that little yellow immunization pack in every country, I think. It, that just makes sense. But what do you think about this? This is a great thing. When do you think we will actually get to travel internationally again as tourists? Comment below. Let me know.